All right. So let's save, and then we'll carry on. And as we're going, just feel free to drop any questions into the window. So the next step is that we're going to move these points in the um, normal direction. And the way we're going to do that is that we're going to use a image sampler. All right, so um, if you go to params, input, image sampler, you should be able to specify any gradient object um, by right-clicking, uh, sorry, a, a gradient image or any image that you have. All right, I could use this. It wouldn't work out so well. But any gradient image that you have into that, um, into that object. And we'll sample it using our UV. All right, so I'm just going to grab the one from the other file. You can do the same if you need to. I'm going to copy and paste it into this file. All right, so now I have a gradient already set up. And what I need is I need the UV. But I also need the UV to correspond with what I'm going to do afterwards, which is going to come from my stream filter. Am I going to use them organ my points organized in the U direction or the V direction? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these two objects by copying and pasting. And I'm going to use the UV output to specify 0 and 1. Make my wires faint so that it's have to be a little bit more clear. These are my points in X, Y, Z, and these are my points in UV. All right. So the next step is, we'll first turn the preview off here because it's creating more points down there. The next step is that we want to relate the points in UV to an image. So essentially the UV space, if we think about it from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 in U and V, and the image space, the pixels, X and Y, will allow us to um, coordinate the color value coming from here with the um, location on the surface. All right, so what I want to do is first drop in a panel, and let's take a look at the output. Here we have numbers. These are in U and V space, and they're going up to 10 in the U and upwards of 10 again in the V. So what I'm going to do is at the very beginning of my file, I want those. I want to make sure that those numbers are between 0 and 1 in both directions. That's a little bit easier for me to understand and easier for me to relate to my image. So I'm going to right-click the reference surface object and say reparameterize. Now all of these point values are going to be between 0 and 1. And I can plug them into my gradient. And this is going to then give me values as an output. Now, one thing we need to make sure we do is double-click the object and make sure that it is specified to color brightness. I'm using a black and white image, so that's going to allow me to uh, more easily query the values instead of RGB as 0 to 1. Okay, so now we have values 0 to 1. Let's take those original points, and let's move them in the normal direction um, using these values as multipliers. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to need the exact same collection of objects for my normal vectors. So again, I'm just going to copy-paste, and we're going to be flipping or not flipping all of the outputs of points, normals, and UVs. All right, so these are my normals. These are my points in X, Y, Z. These are my points in U, V, W. All right, so now I'm getting brightness values here. What we'll do is we'll multiply using math operators multiplication. We're going to multiply our vector by the corresponding color or brightness value in this case. Then we're going to add 
the result of that vector to our original points. Now these new points are also going to get drawn uh, through with the curve. So now, turn some previews off, we have offset curves based on our gradient. You see black is over here, that's zero, so that's a small offset. White is here, and that's a tall offset. And if I toggle my Boolean, I shift in going in rows or columns, and at the same time, my sampling of my image sampler is consistent. All right, so now we have curve outputs. Notice that because the curve did the action for every list, now we have one list of uh, a curve. We have lists with one curve on each list, All right? And the data structure actually didn't grow from the inputs. There's nothing significant changed where it needed to. All right, so now we've worked with the flip matrix, right? Which allows us in a two-dimensional sense to move through, uh, in this case, a U direction and a V direction. All right, 